so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Today, I really wanted to discuss something that is probably my most vulnerable moment in my life um, and beautiful moment in my life. It's my birth story. My birth story did not go as planned by any meaning of the word. Um, I wasn't a serious, serious, like it had to be this way, but I definitely didn't think that it was going to turn into what it did. And you know, you read so many stories about black women dying in childbirth that I felt as though I should definitely share my story with all of you all just to bring awareness and to kind of get it off my chest. So that way, hopefully it can help one of you guys or just bring awareness to it. So I got pregnant pretty quickly. I mean, I got married in March. I got pregnant in like June, right whenever we went into our honeymoon. So it's safe to say that we kind of had a fairy tale kind of love story as far as our journey into fertility. Um, so it was pretty magical. Um, I loved every moment of being pregnant, except for like my back hurting every time whenever I would get into that bed. So I got the largest pillow available at Bed Bath & Beyond. Get that, that's a life changer. But I really enjoyed my first and second trimester because I didn't experience a lot of things that a lot of women experience during childbirth. I mean, sorry, not childbirth, but pregnancy. Um, like for example, the morning sickness, I didn't have that nausea. I didn't have that. I was really just tired and, you know, probably a little bit of a bitch. Uh, not all the time, but sometimes. I mean, you get a pass, right? Um, more than anything, I think that I was really enjoying my time of getting to know my baby. She is exactly what I expected, a total firecracker. Um, and so I loved it. Right whenever I got into my third trimester, I did start to notice that things kind of changed for me. For example, my blood pressure, which was something that, you know, they check your vitals every single time you go into the doctor's office. But whenever I hopped into my third trimester, my blood pressure levels were just steadily increasing. I never had any issues with blood pressure, so I really didn't think that it was going to be a big deal. Um, once again, I just, thought I was kind of okay. Um, so they began testing me. So they did like a 24 hour urine test and they tested me for all sorts of things, hypertension, blood pressure, and then most importantly, preeclampsia. Now I know these are all trigger words and there weren't, you read about it, but you kind of really don't feel as though it pertains to you. But then, you know, you start to read that it affects African-American women at an alarming rate for whatever reason that may be. But it was something that my doctor really wanted to hone into. And so we began doing different things. Um, she started putting me, you know, on blood pressure medicine. She also had me in weekly stress tests. And they told me that like, you know, keep a blood pressure log. So I logged in all of my blood pressures. And then if your blood pressures reach over 160 on your top number and then 110 on your bottom numbers, head to the hospital. So that's kind of the number that I kind of kept in my head as like our measuring stick. And I just tried my best to kind of just not get there. I would get anxiety every time I would put on that freaking blood pressure cuff. So I, I don't even know if I can do that right now. But anyways, <laughs> it gave me major anxiety. So one day on the morning of my maternity shoot, I was so excited to shoot. Um, I got my hair done. I was about to head over to my makeup appointment. And then I checked my blood pressure that morning. I was feeling a little lightheaded. And to my surprise, I was at 177 over 117. Not so good. Um, so my husband was like, Charlie, that's not good. That's like stroke level. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess we need to go in. I felt lightheaded, but I didn't feel like very bad. One of the things that my doctor told me ahead of time was with my blood pressures being so high, I should expect to deliver at around 37 weeks. So that was already in the back of my head. And because of that, she was really proactive. She 
gave me a steroid shot at about 31 weeks. So she gave me the steroid shot and that's to help the baby's lungs develop. So when I went into the hospital, they checked my blood pressures again, they were still sky high. So whenever they were sky high, um, they decided to give me another round of the steroid shots just to kind of help the baby's lungs develop. And so thankful for that. I was able to get that rescue dose. I was in a position where I could. Um, and those steroid shots really help if you kind of, I think, let it last for like 24 hours and then you get the next dose. So hindsight's 2020. I'm very thankful that I decided to get that initial shot at 31 weeks and then again at 34 weeks whenever I went into the hospital. When I went into the hospital, the doctor was so amazing. You know, she was saying that, you know, let's give you another steroid shot. Let's increase your blood pressure medicine. And let's, you know, try to kind of get you relaxed. Let's check it again in the morning. And if we see it in the morning and your blood pressure is still high, we're going to deliver the baby. So at this point, I had kind of already come to terms with that. I'm having my baby early. I had kind of already seen the writing on the wall, especially, you know, between like 32 to 34 weeks. I was just kind of like, uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to have her a little early. Um, I was really nervous about that. I mean, no one really wants to deliver their baby early. So for me, I was just kind of at a standstill, but I kind of had to just release it to God and kind of let him take care of that. Babies are born all the time at 34 weeks and sometimes even born earlier and they're fighters. So, you know, I said to myself, you know what? God's in control. And so I'm sure he's gonna help us with this whole situation. Um, so the next morning, my blood pressures did not decrease. They went higher, even on blood pressure medicine. And they decided that it was time for me to have my baby. Um, whenever I got the notification that we were going to move forward with having the baby, you know, they said that they were going to induce labor. And so after hours and hours and hours of trying to induce labor, it just wasn't happening. During that time, I started feeling like a pain in my stomach and I didn't know what it was. I mean, I, I, I couldn't figure out what it was. And so whenever I started to feel that pain, I notified the doctor, you know, they gave me some different things like, could it be gas, could it be this, you know? But whenever I started to feel that pain, um, Time will tell that in the next couple of hours, um, my kidneys were shutting down on me. And not only were my kidney, my liver um, was also shutting down. Um, I was then diagnosed with severe preeclampsia. And with that, um, it happened so fast. I mean, it just kind of felt like it all happened in the blink of an eye. I went from just high blood pressure and not preeclampsia to that day getting those tests, I got diagnosed with severe preeclampsia and they need to deliver your baby right away. So you can kind of imagine how overwhelmed I felt and my husband. I mean, we were just kind of all in a disarray at that point. Um, whenever my kidneys and my liver started to kind of shut down, we also got notification that my blood platelets were reducing. So one of the signs of preeclampsia is that your organs are starting to shut down in order for the baby to continue growing. So the only way to essentially cure preeclampsia, preeclampsia from my understanding with my experience is just to deliver the baby. So they, um, went ahead, kept trying to induce me. And after hours and hours of trying, um, my family kind of all stepped in. Um, the doctors were incredible, but I do think that there is this sort of unconscious bias for black women. And I think it would be ignorant for me to not speak on it. Um, there's this uncon unconscious bias that tells us that, or tells people they can handle it and they can handle the pain or they can go there. But thankfully, and, and here's the thing, I wasn't really planning for a lot of my family to be there for my birth. My birth plan kind of just really had me and my husband there. 
So I ended up, because of the severity, you know, I ended up being there with my mom, with three of my sisters, and then my fourth sister ended up coming along right whenever she got the nurse. So like all of my sisters, I had my mom there and my husband there, and we were all kind of there and gathering all of the information because I was too kind of unconscious to even comprehend what was going on. They gave me a medicine, it's called magnesium, and because my blood pressure was so high and I was at stroke level, the magnesium was given to me so that way it could prevent me from having a stroke. So I wasn't really there. So I am so, so, so thankful for my family and my support system because they really did advocate for me, you know. My husband's on the phone with our friends that are doctors and he's giving them all of the charts. My sister's on the phone with like an OBGYN that she knows and she's giving all the charts. And, you know, the conclusion that they all came up to was you need to deliver this baby right now. And more importantly, you need to deliver the baby before baby or mom goes into distress. Now, I think that the hospital facility was fantastic in the way in which they handled everything. They're great. But at the same time, you know, if I were to get pregnant again, I, and I'm not there yet, I'm going to need lots of therapy after talking about this experience, you know, would we have waited that long and hours and hours and hours before delivering the baby? I don't know. You know, that's something that I talked to with my doctor and, you know, we try to develop a plan for that if we do decide to get pregnant again. Flashing back to that day. Um, because my liver and my kidney and my blood platelets were dropping so dramatically and so quickly, um, they decided that it was best for me to have a baby, have the baby via emergency C-section under anesthesia. Now, I'm going to tell you, I am not a strict like planner in that regard, but I did not plan for an emergency C-section under anesthesia where you can't have any family there. I mean... That kind of hurt. Um, it also hurt not being awake to see your baby whenever she's born. Um, I don't know. I feel like I was kind of robbed of that. But I understand that it's all a part of God's plan. But I'm just being honest. Um, so I went into the... OR and they delivered a healthy baby girl at four pounds. Um, she is the light of our life, born at 34 weeks, and she's pretty freaking special, if I might add. Um, whenever we came out, you know, I did end up having to go right on into critical care because my blood pressure was still high. They could not get it under control and my blood platelets were still very low. Um, Navy, on the other hand, my beautiful baby girl, was just, because of the steroid shots, her lungs had developed so she didn't really need to be on oxygen for like longer than a few minutes. And then she went on into NICU where she stayed for two weeks and just kind of knocked that right on out of the park. As far as I went in to HELP syndrome. So HELP syndrome is the condition that they cause from, it's caused from preeclampsia, but it is whenever your organs begin to shut down. So because of the HELP, you know, they did want to put me under more supervision and more care um, just to kind of oversee everything, just to make sure that mom was just as healthy as baby girl. Um. I stayed in the critical care for about a day or two. So thankfully I was able to come out of there, you know, with everything intact. And I was still on the magnesium. So I didn't get to see Navy until the following day. Um, that kind of hurt too, I mean, but I was so blessed to have my husband there because he was so supportive and so so um, informative and, you know, showed me pictures as soon as I woke up and stayed by my side the entire time. So forever indebted to the partner of my life um, for being such an incredible husband and father. And I know I'm so lucky and blessed to have him by my side 
at such a crucial time in my life. But all in all, um, it was scary, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, having one of those near death experiences in childbirth was not something that I thought would be the story for me. I mean, you read it all over magazines and articles and you see those things where it's like African-American women dying at an alarming rate at childbirth, or you see this happened to this African-American woman or this, and you kind of wonder why. And, you know, I think that there's more strength in education and there's more strength in knowing the information. You know, I just feel as though we're doing ourselves a disservice by not sharing our experiences. Um, and I'm here to share mine because I'm so blessed and fortunate enough to be able to be here with you all to tell it. I am so grateful to God for my beautiful family and for my life to be able to witness it here on this earth. Because I know that there's so many of us that weren't afforded that same luxury. Childbirth is not easy. And um, I think even if you want a more intimate experience, I think that educating yourself and knowing different numbers and stats and being informed with the information that you need um, will really help you as well as your loved ones be your advocate if you ever were to go into a moment where you really needed to lean on them because you can't lean on yourself. I'm so grateful to all of my family for being such strong advocates for me and for my health and for my baby's health um, because without them, who knows what would have happened, but um, I am so thankful and grateful to God and I just wanted to make sure that I shared my story with all of you all and if you have any questions, let me know. I am more than willing to share my experience with you. I wanted to shout out to all of the moms out there for being the strong, beautiful fighters that you guys are. Us women are warriors. And, you know, I walked out of there with a whole new outtake on life and gratitude and what I want to pour into and what I want to pour into others and what I want to be poured into myself. So I hope that you all feel the love that I'm trying to share with you all. And I hope that this story can help uplift someone or to educate someone. And I just want to thank you all for tuning in.